What's the word? Yo, man, I'm super excited because the NBA Finals are set. We have Miami Heat versus LA Lakers. And I have my my, my dog in here. Like, literally, he's sitting. He's sit. He left. Okay. The dog is not in there. Okay. All right. All right. Disregard that. He's not in here. So, which is better for us because we don't have to worry about him making noise because he's not in the room. Either way, um, I feel like this channel is just coming to the point where when there's things on my mind, NBA related, I come and talk about it. And I think that's what y'all like, right? I'm going to say this right now. We're going to be talking about the finals, right? But I will not. I will not be given a prediction. It's just not who I am. It's not what I do. It's not what I do. Because This is why. Because in the past when I've had made predictions on anything, anything, the way it works is if you're right, nobody cares. When you're wrong, when you're wrong, people are digging up the tweets, the, vi the screen caps. If I said right now Lakers in six, right, hypothetically speaking, and the Miami Heat came out and won this series, there are going to be a thousand Heat fans that, that clip me saying Lakers in six and say, Kenny, you were wrong. And though it doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm okay with being wrong. I hate when people try to switch the word. Anyway, I'm going to be talking about matchups and stuff, but I won't be giving a final definitive, I think this team is going to win, because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what I think. But still watch the video. That would, that would be something I say. Still watch the video, subscribe, and like the video. Okay, so we have a finals. It is set. Miami Heat versus LA Lakers. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to all the people working inside the bubble because when the season got shut down, there was a legitimate period of time where we did not know if we were going to get to the point where we crowned a champion, and we were about to do that. So shout out to all the players for being dedicated to, to playing basketball, all the people that are working to, to do the testing or keeping things safe, keeping things um, uh, clean. Shout out to everybody there. And shout out to the commissioner for, for putting together this magnificent bubble. If you really think about it, related to the virus, we only had three different mishaps. And that is insane. That is insane. Who would have thought that we would have been able to put together how many? 200, 300 adult people and nobody, only three people make mistakes. That's insane. First one, we had Rashawn Holmes, who didn't even know the rules. He went off campus to get some some Texas Let Longhouse, whatever the heck that restaurant is. He wanted some steak. He couldn't get steak in the bubble the first week. So he tried to go get it and had to go quarantine. Okay, first mistake. Second one was Lemon Pepper Lou. And though there was hella headlines and stories on, on TV and everything, that didn't even turn out to be anything. That's number two. And number three, Daniel House had to leave the bubble because he tried to get somebody to come into his room. Either way, those are three, just three mistakes that were made. So shout out to the players for being dedicated on one common goal of playing basketball and trying to become champions. Like, we cannot express that enough. Shout out to them. Again, shout out to all the workers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because the fans, we are appreciative because we got our favorite sport back. And though it's it's bittersweet because, A, yes, we're about to get a champion. Um, but basketball is going to stop again. And though we will have off season and stuff, we don't know when basketball is coming back. You know, like in the regular season, um, once we crown a champion, we know, OK, season will be back late September, early October. We don't have an idea now. It won't be this calendar year. They already said that it's going to be early 2021. And part of me is questioning, like, OK, so if we uh, here's the, here's the rambling part. We, we haven't even got into the series. Um, if we do start the season early 2021. Will we ever? get back to the like September to April, late September to, to April regular season again? Or would the season always play to this point? Because the only way you get it back on the normal schedule is if you shorten the season. And I don't think that's a priority of the NBA's, bro. They just missed out on six months of, of ticket revenue. They're not shortening no season. So we could be seeing like a real big shift on our NBA season from now on. They, even, they had already talked about this before the virus. I'm going to keep referring to it as a virus because if you say the name, you get demonetized. And I, I, I do enjoy making money on work. Um, before the virus, they had talked about trying to change the schedule of the season so we do play in the, in the summer. So the virus kind of helped that. Let's get to the finals. We have the underdog Miami Heat. And I say underdog because they were the five seed. Nobody expected them except for maybe diehard Heat fans and – J.R. Smith are the only people that expected the Heat to make the finals going into the playoffs. And then, of course, the L.A. Lakers. So right now, take my word for this. On 538, it is a website that I like to go to because I find it interesting to look at advanced stats and things like that. I don't take advanced stats as face value, but I think they're very interesting to look at, right? A 538 is a website that goes into not just sports. I think they have a politics section. I, I mean, anyway, I, I look at the basketball-related stuff. And they have this Raptor. Raptor player model, whatever the heck that means, and they have percentages. They're saying that the Miami Heat are a 73% favorite to win this finals. 
73%. And the Lakers, of course, if you do a math, leaves them at 20, 27%. Um, that is baloney. <laughs> that, that, is, that is crazy to think that the Heat are that much of a favorite. I mean, if you think the Heat are going to win the championship, that's fine. But to think that they are a 73% favorite to win the series is kind of ridiculous, right? And then they have another metric that's called the Eloy. Um, only Eloy I mess with is Eloy Jimenez. Go White Sox. But this one has the, the Lakers at a 55% and the Heat at a 45%. And I think that is a lot more, um, that's a better spread than the other one. I'm speaking of spreads, going into game number one, the Lakers are a five-point favorite. So that lets you know that this Raptor thing is kind of weird. And they actually had the Bulls making the playoffs before the season started. And then uh, since that moment when they lied to me is when I stopped believing in, in their advanced stats, honestly. Um, I think this series boils down to the, the age-old question of stardom versus depth. The Lakers have the top two stars. And the Miami Heat undoubtedly have the more, the more depth. I mean, we just saw Andre Iguodala come in and look like, shoot, I don't even know. He looked like his former teammate, Klay Thompson. Because I can't even say look like past Iggy, because past Iggy still won't hit a threes like that, let's be honest with each other. So he looked like Klay Thompson on offense and defense. So they undoubtedly have the depth, but the Lakers have the top two players. When you really think about going into the season, and I think I've mentioned this before on, on one of these, these videos, how like ESPN and all these other big publications um, had, I think, five or six teams ahead of the Lakers when it came to who was the favorite to win a championship before the season started. That is ridiculous. I mean, again, yes, there, there were major question marks for this Lakers team. And, and I was one of those people that had major question marks. But to think that there were six or five or six teams that had a higher chance than a LeBron-led team with Anthony Davis is crazy. We talk about two top, I don't know, what do you want to put Anthony Davis? Top five, top six? I don't even know. Let's be general. Let's just be top ten. They have two top ten players, even though Anthony Davis is higher than top ten. That alone should be enough for you to be one of the favorites. And people, people on the Twitterverse – Things like that. We all knew that the Lakers were going to be good. I don't know how the heck these writers and, and experts can. Anyway, that's maybe I'm just maybe hindsight is is twenty twenty. Basically, what I'm saying is, if you have two top whatever players on the team, re regardless regardless of your depth, your shooting, and your defense, because those are the three major questions. Because I went back to watch a lot of those those clips when people were trying to predict the Lakers. Their bigger, biggest questions were the depth, and honestly, the depth is still kind of a question mark, and they're in the finals, and it's still a question mark. Who's that third best player? And it sometimes it's Rondo, I guess. Sometimes it's Dwight Howard, I guess. I mean, I don't really know. Um, so depth is still kind of a question mark, especially in comparison to their team that they're going against who has who's like 10 players deep that you can trust on a championship roster, which is crazy. Um, depth, three-point shooting has come around a little bit. Early bubble, man, they were shooting like 25% from three, and that is not the case anymore. So shout out to um, Catavius Caldwell Pope. Fan, Lakers fans wanted his neck, but now he's looking decent. Um, Danny Green still ain't put it together as far as shooting the ball goes. Uh, shout out to Rondo. Rondo turned into his former teammate Ray Allen in the, in the playoffs. The playoffs Rondo. He's just a, a three-point specialist now. So the three-point thing has, has simmered down, and the defense is something they nipped in the bud immediately when the season started. Um, I read an article. I'm going to stop saying that. I listen to a podcast. <laughs> listen to a podcast and reading articles. You sound so much you sound so much better saying I read an article, right? I listen to a podcast because I'm lazy. Um and basically was saying that LeBron looked at this roster and and went all in on the defensive side of the ball this season and really got his team to go in all on the defensive side of the ball and it's worked out they were one of the top defenses in the league. So two of the question marks are still kind of there but the defense is certain they are an elite defensive team. Cool. But even with all of that considered, when you have LeBron James, who for the most part we can agree is still the best player in the league, I would hope, and then Anthony Davis, you know, you, you would expect him to be good. Either way, as a fan, for me as an outside fan, no matter who wins this series, I'm going to be happy. Um, right, literally right on the left side of me here, I have a big poster of Jimmy Butler. As you know, as a Bulls fan, Jimmy Butler's one of my guys, drafted him where he did, and watching his growth is amazing. And if you watch the main channel, you know Bam Adebayo is one of my guys as well. Um, think about Bam Adebayo. He went from his rookie season, we saw glimpses, of course, that he was going to be a solid NBA player. But you're wondering, when will he put it together? Will he ever be able to put it together for an extensive period of time? Then second year came around. Hassan Whiteside had some situations where there'd be injuries or whatever. It was just games where Hassan Whiteside wasn't playing and um, Bam looked good. So I, I understood this offseason when they got rid of Hassan Whiteside and gave Bam Adebayo the keys. And then, But even that considered, like if you go back and watch 
my early prediction video, which is funny because I just mentioned how I don't like to do predictions. One of my earliest prediction videos, somebody was like, the Heat will be the eighth seed and they'll surprise some people. I was like, no, that team will be a top four. I mean, technically, I guess I was wrong because they end up being a five seed. I was like, they were going to be a top four team in the East. And Bam is my pick for most improved player. Even though he was my pick for most improved player going into the season, I still did not see him jumping up to the point where he's jumped up now. He went from a backup last season to if this war award was given out, he would have been the Eastern Conference Finals MVP. Easily. Easily was the best player for the Miami Heat this series. Crazy. That is crazy growth. And when you listen to Pat, um, to Pat Riley, and again, I'm saying listening because I don't read articles, so if you don't uh, have somebody reading your article for you, I won't, read, I, I, I won't get the knowledge from it. That just sounds terrible. Uh, one of the reasons he, he drafted Bam Adebayo is because of his work ethic. And it sounds very simple, right? It sounds very simple. A guy, a guy, a guy work, works hard. Cool. But Bam worked harder than a lot of people in that draft class. And he dropped to where he dropped. And boom, here he is um, on the brink of superstardom. So one of my biggest questions. Oh, on the Lakers side of the ball, why I would be okay if they won the series. Because Anthony Davis is Chicago. And one of the biggest knocks on him coming into the season was like, he's never been able to do it on the main stage. He made it to the playoffs a few times. And he got out of the first round once. But it was Drew Holiday and Rajon Rondo carrying him. And though Drew Holiday and Rajon Rondo did an amazing job guarding CJ and Dame, Anthony Davis definitely had a good series too, so I didn't really understand that. Um, but now we've seen him be the number one option on a team that is going to the championship, and I'm saying that for the most part because he's getting a lot of shots. You know, I'm, LeBron is still the guy. Um, and he hit the biggest shot of his career in the Western Conference Finals to the game winner. Called game, ladies and gentlemen. He called game. If you know, you know. So seeing that, seeing Rondo, a lot of Bulls fans hate Rondo from the previous series we played against him, and then he came to Chicago and was just doo-doo. Um, but I still do like Rondo, and Dwight Howard is a player that I would be happy to see win a championship as well. So no matter who wins the series, I'm happy from different reasons. But either way, one thing that that's I think that Eric Spoelstra's got his hands full with is how they play with this double big lineup that the Lakers run, because the Heat don't have a big lanky defender um, other than Bam Adebayo, really, as far as like guarding fours and fives. I mean, they run the lineup of Iggy, J. Crowder. These are guys that can guard fours. We've seen them do it before. Um, but, like, the Lakers run JaVale McGee and Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis, Dwight Howard. I just don't know how they defend that. I'm sure they'll figure it out because it's Eric Sposis. He's one of the greatest coaches in the league. And they have they have smart defenders, too. But it's something that I'm, I'm, very, I'm questioning. Um, I saw somebody ask me on Twitter, will we see Iggy lock up LeBron again? No, probably not. Because um, even locking up LeBron was still crazy good numbers. And, yes, he did shoot, what did y'all say, 35% when he was guarded by Iggy? Iggy's not can't guard him for 48. It's just, let's just be honest with each other. Iggy can't guard him for 48. So LeBron is still going to have a series. Um, and he he showed that, like, in the last elimination game versus the Nuggets, he was like, I'm not going to let them have any hope to come back 3-1 again. And for the last couple minutes in the video, man, he was looking dominant again, which is beautiful, which is beautiful. So Iggy's going to get a lot of assignment there. Jimmy Butler's going to get a lot of assignments there. Jay Crowder's going to get it. Because Jay Crowder's actually played him pretty well throughout the course of their careers too. So um, LeBron is not going to have any easy minutes by any means. But it's also LeBron James. You know, it's also LeBron James. I just believe that as long as Anthony Davis is on the court, the Miami Heat are going to have to have Bam Adebayo on the court. Have to. Because there's none of their backup bigs can do anything with Anthony Davis, at least in my eyes. Maybe somebody surprises me. Maybe the fire hydrant of a player at Solomon Hill, I don't know. But I feel like their minutes are going to have to be matched because they don't have anybody else to guard Anthony Davis. Overall, I am super excited for this series. I cannot wait. I think we have two days of no basketball, which is kind of trash, but it is what it is. I know that they need their rest. Man, was that Rachel Nichols? Why does she ask Eric Spoelstra about LeBron three seconds after the buzzer? Can we? Can, I, I liked Eric Spoelstra's response. Can we just let these guys celebrate for a little bit, and we'll talk about game plan after tonight? Like, come on, bro. Let's let these boys celebrate. I mean, they came out of nowhere and just won the Eastern Conference Finals. Let them celebrate. Talk about matchups the next day. We got two days of no basketball. I'm sure they're gonna do some press. Ask them then. And that is my ramble about this series. Um, let's hope that it goes a long series because I'm not, I'm not ready to get rid of basketball, especially since we don't know. We don't know when basketball comes back. Early 2021, whatever that means. Is that January? Is that February? Is that March? I have no idea. All right, that's it. Uh, uh, called game. If you got to the part of this video, just spam called game in the comment section because you, you're a legend. Thank you.